Hey everyone, welcome back. Ready to dive into something big. We're tackling the future of jobs this time. You know, what's going to be happening in the work world. And we've got the perfect crystal ball for this. We're diving deep into the 2023 World Economic Forum report. They're basically the authority on where the global job market is headed. Exactly, and they've really gone all out this year, looking at global trends, tech, and how all of this impacts you and me and our careers. Right, and it's not just speculation. They're backing it up with some serious data. I've gotta say, it's some fascinating stuff. Okay, so the report starts off in 2023, gives us a snapshot of what the job market looks like right now, and honestly, it's kinda all over the place. COVID, aftershocks, inflation messing with everyone's paychecks. Yeah, it's a mixed bag, for sure. We're seeing some industries just desperate for workers and others, well, they're showing people the door. It's this really uneven recovery, and the report goes deep on how it's hitting different places and income levels differently, too. High-income countries seem to be bouncing back faster, which leaves emerging markets struggling to keep up, creating a sort of two-speed global economy, you could say. And then, of course, there's the whole gig work explosion happening. The report points to this as a major, major trend. Oh, yeah, definitely. But it also makes it clear that those workers, they're on shaky ground, especially when the economy takes a hit. Right. They don't always have the same safety net as traditional jobs. It's a trade-off, for sure. Flexibility, but maybe at the cost of some security. And if anyone out there is feeling the pinch, the report has a pretty eye-opening stat. Real wages. Down globally, first time in 15 years. This cost of living crisis is no joke, and it's just adding another layer of complexity to the whole job market situation. Seriously, it's a lot to handle. No wonder the report found that for a lot of people, it's not just about landing any job anymore. It's about finding the right job. One with, you know, flexibility, a decent work-life balance. Even sense of purpose. Exactly. Job quality is becoming just as important as just having a job in the first place. That's a key takeaway. This isn't just about economics anymore. It's about value shifting. The report's saying people are rethinking what they want from their work lives. And employers, mm -hmm. they got to pay attention to that. It's like a wake-up call for everyone. Okay, so that's the backdrop. Now let's get into the big stuff. The things that are going to completely reshape the job landscape. And we have to start with the elephant in the room technology right because tech it's not just part of the future of work it is the future of work it's everything the report shows just how much tech adoption is exploding right now ai cloud computing big data it's not even a question of if companies are jumping on these but how fast and that speed that's where things get interesting because that speed also means jobs are going to change and quickly we're talking some roles becoming obsolete, others blowing up in demand. And a whole lot of uncertainty in between. And, it, you know, it's not just about robots taking everyone's jobs. I know that's the headline everyone jumps to. But the report makes it clear this shift, this tech shift, it's going to create completely new roles. Jobs that need creativity. People who can solve complex problems. People who can work with technology, not just be replaced by it. So it's not just about learning how to code, really. It's about those skills that are, like, uniquely human, the stuff that's hard to automate. Exactly. Which is a good thing, because we'll be getting into that whole skills evolution thing a bit later. Oh, yeah. We've got to unpack that for sure. Okay. So we've got this tech revolution going on, and at the same time, another massive force is shaping up, the green transition. Sustainability is becoming a big deal. And with that, we're seeing a surge in jobs related to all things green, renewable energy, conservation. Okay, that's got to be a good thing, right? More green jobs. Yeah. But I'm guessing it's not as simple as just, you know, slapping a coat of green paint on everything and calling it a day. You got it. The report actually calls out a big challenge, the green skills gap. We need a massive investment in training and reskilling. Otherwise, we'll end up with all these green jobs, but nobody qualified to fill them. Ouch. Talk about a missed opportunity. Okay, so I've got the tech revolution, we've got the green transition, and because two massive changes weren't enough, let's throw in some geopolitical instability for good measure. Why not? Supply chains are shifting, trade wars are brewing. It's a wild world out there. Absolutely, it's a lot of complexity. And the report points out how all this instability creates winners and losers in the job market. Some industries benefit from things like bringing supply chains closer to home, but others get hit hard by tariffs and those trade wars. 
It's definitely a situation that requires businesses and individuals to be really adaptable and strategic. Yeah, no kidding. It really makes you wonder who comes out on top in all this. And speaking of coming out on top, the report actually takes a guess at what the job market's going to look like in just a few years. By 2027, they're saying we could see a net loss of 14 million jobs globally. Yeah, 14 million. It's a big number. It sounds kind of scary when you put it like that. <laughs> it does. But yeah. the important thing to remember is that Numbers hiding a lot of churn underneath. Like, mm -hmm. we're talking 83 million jobs lost, but also 69 million gained. It's not just about jobs disappearing. It's about them transforming. Some are going to be in super high demand, while others, well, they're going to fade away. Okay, so which ones are we talking about here? What should people be, like, actually preparing for? Well, the report points to education as being huge, like massive growth. They're predicting we'll need something like 3 million more teachers globally. And that's everything from vocational schools all the way up to universities. This whole lifelong learning trend, it's more than just a buzzword. It's going to be an economic engine. Wow, three million. That's a lot of teachers. Right. So good news if you're passionate about, you know, teaching or training. What about the whole digital world? It feels like everything's going digital these days. Totally. And the report's right there with you. They're predicting huge growth in digital trade about 4 million new jobs for e-commerce, digital marketing, you name it. Even your traditional businesses, they're all going to need people who get the digital world. It's like the internet's just woven into everything now. Completely. Okay, so education, digital stuff, we can't forget about the green wave. How does that translate into actual jobs? Yeah, so the report highlights things like solar panel installers, wind turbine technicians, sustainability consultants. Those are all going to be in high demand. But they also make it clear that competition for those jobs is going to be fierce, especially given that green skills gap we were talking about. So you really got to have the right training, certificates, that kind of thing. For sure. Okay, so some jobs are going to be booming, but it sounds like some are definitely on the way out. What did they flag as being most at risk? The most vulnerable ones. Huh? It's the jobs that are easiest to automate. So think clerical work, data entry, bank tellers. If any of that sounds familiar, it might be time to start thinking about your next move. You know, how you can upskill or reskill for something new. It's a good reality check. You can't just coast in today's world, this job market. It's constantly changing, and we've got to change with it. You got it. And the report really stresses that this isn't just about, like, learning to code or operate some robot. It's a whole new skill set. They call it the skills evolution, where things like cognitive skills and adaptability, those are kings. Okay, so break that down for us. What exactly is the skills evolution? Mm. So they highlight things like analytical thinking creativity, complex problem solving. That's the kind of stuff that's really, really hard to automate. So like robots might be able to crunch numbers faster, but they can't really replicate actual human creativity or problem solving skills. Exactly. And because the world's changing so fast, the report's saying that lifelong learning, it's not optional anymore. It's essential. We've got to be able to adapt, learn new stuff quickly, and be comfortable with the fact that things are always changing. Like that old saying, the only constant is change. But it's not just about our brains either, right? They talked about emotional intelligence too. Oh, absolutely. Huh. They actually emphasize that in this world that's being driven by technology, those uniquely human skills, things like collaboration, being able to communicate well, empathy, those are more important than ever. So it's not enough to just be the tech whiz in the corner anymore. Mm -hmm. You've got to be a well-rounded human, someone who can actually work with people, not just machines. Exactly. Now, think about yourself for a second. Your strengths, what you're good at, what gets you fired up, how could those skills translate into this new job market? It's about taking control, being proactive. Right. But I imagine that can feel pretty overwhelming, especially when it seems like the future is so up in the air. What can people actually do, like concrete steps? So the report gives advice for both workers and employers. For individuals, the message is clear. Invest in yourself. Take some online courses, go to conferences, network with people in your field, and don't be scared to switch careers if you need to. Be adaptable. See those changes as opportunities, not threats. 100%. And what about employers? What's the message for them? It's about prioritizing reskilling and upskilling programs. Create a culture of lifelong learning. Support your employees' professional development. And be ready to change how you hire. Don't just look at degrees, look at skills. That makes a lot of sense. Investing in your employees, their skills, that's got to be a smart move for any company that wants to keep up. Totally. It's a win win. Employees get those valuable skills and knowledge. Employers get a more adaptable, future proof workforce. But even with all the prep in the world, 
let's be real, this whole transition, it's going to come with some bumps in the road. Oh, yeah. There's always a flip side. What are some of the potential downsides they point out? One of the biggest concerns is inequality. Like, what happens if all the good stuff that comes from automation and tech, what if that doesn't get shared around fairly? We could see this gap between the haves and the have-nots get even wider. It's like we're about to go through this massive tech revolution, but will it actually help everyone, or are some people going to get left behind? It's a big question. And it's not even just about having a job. It's about the kind of job. Are these good jobs? Decent wages, benefits, you know, the whole package. Because a future with a bunch of low-paying, dead-end jobs, that doesn't help anybody. No, it's got to be better than that. We yeah. need a future of work that works for everyone. 100%. And I imagine all this rapid change, it's got to mess with people's heads a bit, too. It's a lot to process. Yeah, absolutely. This isn't just an economic shift. It's a mental one, too. The report even talks about this, like the downsides of being constantly connected, the information overload. That stuff can lead to stress, anxiety, even burnout. It's true. It's like we never really switch off, always getting pinged, always checking updates. It's nonstop. Finding a way to, like, unplug, set some boundaries, that's probably going to be crucial for people. Essential. And then there's the whole issue of tech being misused. I mean, it's not always intentional, but we've got to be aware of the ethical stuff, especially with AI, algorithmic bias, things like that. So that's when, like, AI is used for hiring decisions or even loans, but the algorithms, they're built on biased data, so they end up just reinforcing the inequalities that already exist. Exactly. We've really got to stay on top of that and make sure this tech is developed and used responsibly, ethically. Mm -hmm. And that's an ongoing thing, you know, constantly evaluating and adjusting. So it sounds like this future of work, it's a bit of a balancing act. For sure. Huge potential, but also some real risks to watch out for. I think that's a good way to put it. It's not about being all sunshine and roses or doom and gloom, you know. It's mm -hmm. about being realistic, understanding the opportunities and the challenges. And the most important thing, we're not just along for the ride. We can actually shape this future. We have a say. So what can people do? It's easy to feel powerless when everything feels so big and chaotic. First thing is to stay informed. Reports like this one, they're a good starting point. But don't stop there. Read industry blogs, listen to podcasts like this one, go to webinars, whatever it takes. Be a sponge for new information. It's about understanding the big picture, but then figuring out how it applies to you, your skills, your interests, what you want to be doing. Yes. And don't be afraid to experiment a little. Take an online course, learn some new software. The more adaptable you are, the better you'll be able to roll with these changes. Yeah. And your network, that's huge. Connect with people in your field, go to conferences, never stop learning and growing. It's like that whole future-proof your career thing. It sounds like it's less about finding that one perfect job and more about constantly learning and adapting as you go. 100%. Think of it like a journey, not a destination. There's going to be bumps, detours, maybe even a U-turn or two. That's life, mm -hmm. you know. And with all this talk about automation and robots coming for our jobs, it's easy to freak out a bit. For sure. But what if we flip the script? What if instead of replacing us, AI could actually make our jobs better? Okay, yeah, we haven't really touched on that side of it. What does the report say about AI being a partner, not a replacement? So they talk about something called augmented intelligence, which is basically AI designed to work with us, not against us. Okay, so like AI as our sidekick. Exactly. You can do things like analyze huge amounts of data, spot patterns we might miss, give us insights that would take us forever to figure out on our own. And it can handle those repetitive, boring tasks that nobody wants to do anyway. So we can ditch the boring stuff and focus on the things humans are good at, like the strategic thinking, the creative problem solving. Exactly. But even with this whole collaborative approach, we've still got to be mindful of the ethical side. We need to make sure these AI systems are designed responsibly with human oversight. You know, someone's accountable. Like we're stepping into uncharted territory here, so we got to watch our step. 100%. We can't just blindly trust every shiny new tech that comes along without thinking about what could go wrong. The report really emphasizes how important it is for everyone to talk to each other. The policymakers, the techies, the people who are actually going to be doing these jobs. We've got to make sure AI is being developed and used in a way that benefits everybody. So find that middle ground. Embrace the innovation, but make sure it's actually aligned with our values, that it's not just going to make existing problems worse. Exactly. The future of work. We get to decide what it looks like. And yeah, there are definitely going to be some challenges, but there's also a huge opportunity here to create a future of work that's more fulfilling, more equitable, more meaningful. 
for everyone. A future where work isn't just a way to pay the bills, but a way to use your skills, follow your passions, make a difference. Well said. We're writing the story as we go. The future's not set in stone. So stay informed, be ready to adapt, never stop learning, and we can build a future of work that we can all be proud of. That's a great note to end on. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the future of work. We hope you found it insightful and maybe even feel a little more prepared for whatever's next. Remember, the future's not something to be scared of. It's full of possibilities just waiting for us. Mm -hmm.